Hey everyone and welcome to my patch 13.20 midlane tier list. Now this is not a tier list specific to any elo, this is just overall what I think is strongest in midlane at the moment. If you're low elo, you might find that some of the simpler champs should be a bit higher on the list than you're seeing here, but this is basically just my experience and what I think is the strongest. So first I'm going to go through and talk about kind of like what each tier represents. Um, and obviously if you just want to skim through the video, there's a bunch of timestamps in the description. But first off is S tier. So S tier in general is just the turbo broken tier. I think the champs in this tier are the ones to generally set the meta and i think are just kind of like pickle ban super op champs champs in a are basically your meta blind picks your meta counter picks and overall just like kind of the meta mids right like these are the the champs that if you play are probably going to inflate your elo somewhat because they are just strong b tier i think b tier consists of champs that are relatively strong but they're not super overbearing right like there are better champs in the game but you're also not really putting yourself at any sort of weakness by playing champs on this uh in this tier and then C tier, so C tier is a champ that is full, or C tier is a tier full of champs with either they're slightly weaker or they're just slightly more situational. So when we when we get to some of these champs, I'll talk about them. Um, but yeah, overall, like most champs in C tier are outperformed, of course, by champs above them. I still think that pretty much every champ on this list is a, a solid one for climbing solo queue. Like you're not really putting yourself at a huge disadvantage by playing one of these champs, but you're potentially giving up some elo that might be easier to get by playing one of the champs that is currently considered stronger. And finally, D tier. So D tier is champs that, again, they're not necessarily weak or non-viable. It's just that there's very few situations when they're better than other champions. Um, again, when we get to them, I'll talk about some of the specifics. But I think overall, you probably are putting yourself at a disadvantage by playing champs in D tier unless you're using them very specifically or very situationally as counters to certain things. So overall, I think that, you know, pretty much everything is viable in mid. You know, it's a, it's a role with a ton of diversity. So you can always play whatever you want and what you find fun. But this is of course what I think is the strongest. So real quick before we get into the champs I just want to talk about the patch changes and how they affect the tier list as a whole as well as just like what in general I think is valuable at the moment. So if the, with the patch changes on 13.20 I think overall the game has slowed down a little bit so snowballing is slightly less strong. This is because a lot of laning runes were nerfed. It's because jungle ganks are now less frequent um, and also planning is worth a little bit less than before 125 down from 175. So overall scaling got a slight buff and early snowballing got a slight nerf. I don't actually think it's changed the meta a whole lot. It might be that it still has to kind of shake itself out and people kind of have to decide what they think is valuable. But personally, I don't think it's super different, but it has affected my placings a little bit. Um, like an example being Lissandra would have been S tier for me on the last patch, but is now A tier. Um, but yeah, what do I think is actually valuable at the moment? So I think that scaling naturally is valuable. Now, I don't think scaling at the cost of early game is particularly valuable, right? Like you see a lot of pure scaling champions um, pretty low down on my list. I think if you have the ability to have a strong lane, have impact in skirmishes and scale, that's quite valuable at the moment, especially because again, champions in S tier, which in this case is just Orianna, they tend to warp the meta around them, right? So a lot of champions at the moment kind of have to pass the Orianna check of like, can I lane against Orianna? And then like, if yes, it's like, okay, how much scaling can I get away with or I mean obviously you can just ban Orianna and then it comes you know can we lane against these champs can we still have pressure in the early skirmishes while being able to scale up so yeah at the moment overall like laning strength as as always in solo queue is good having the ability to scale on top of that is nice if you can I think mobility or at least some sort of kind of self peel or something like that is quite valuable too because there's still a lot of melee supporting and at least for now, there's still a lot of ganking junglers. Again, with the jungle changes, you might see that people gradually begin to favor farming junglers, which might actually make mid lane mobility less required. But at least in the couple days that I've played so far, it still feels like mobility, especially against the supports, is quite valuable. Let's talk about individual champs then. I'm not going to go through literally everything on the list, but I want to talk about kind of the big ones. So we'll start with Orianna. I think Orianna is super, super broken at the moment. She scales extremely well. She's got a strong lane phase. She has multiple different options in her runes. Like she can use phase rush. She can still run airy if she wants, um, which gives her just a lot of flexibility against a lot of different comps. She's also still a pretty good blind pick. The only real weakness to Orianna at the moment is some comps where they can like shut her down early with lots of gank setup. But honestly, there's not too many that can do that. And a lot of the champs that have good gank setup suffer a lot in the 1v1 to Orianna so unless you're playing in quite high elo when you're gonna get you know a lot of gank I guess attention you know if you're playing into an Orianna it, it can be quite risky you know if you play something like listen to Ori like yeah in theory you can play for for ganks and kills onto her but a lot of the time you're just not gonna get that help especially if you end up playing with something like a range support on your team so Overall, I think Orianna definitely the queen of mid right now. Um, super, super OP and, and in a tier of her own, in my opinion. 
Coming down to the A tier then, so these champs are all still very strong, and I'll talk about most of them. So first off, of course, is Lissandra, and I think Lissandra is still really, really broken. Last patch, she would have been S tier for me. I think because Snowballing has been nerfed a little, um, because junglers are ganking a little less, I'll, I'll have her a little lower. Um, I, I still think she's an incredible champ in solo queue, and she's very, very OP as a blind pick and a counter pick, which is super, super valuable. But I do think she's lost a few points for me, mainly because, you know, if the game does end up going slower, and you're laning against something like an Orianna or a Syndra or a Zia, other pretty popular champs you are going to suffer quite a lot in the 1v1 like you need 2v2s you need 3v3s to happen so overall you know it's still very very potent champ and, and of course one of the premier blind picks but i don't think it's quite s tier anymore another one that i want to talk about a lot is syndra so syndra can be a bit risky to play sometimes because she is a bit more vulnerable than some of the other mages like even though she's a phase rush user it's your self peel with your e is a long cooldown and also it's an ability that you often use aggressively so there are going to be lots of times where it's down for you i still think cinder is actually quite valuable at the moment mainly because she's one of the few champs that can lane pretty well into oriana and not just from a pure 1v1 point of view so if you check a, ta a champ like victor right like victor actually lanes pretty well into oriana but the problem is like victor you know very vulnerable to early ganks um wins the 1v1 but not particularly good at skirmishing can't really set up any ganks of his own whereas it feels like Syndra, while not quite as strong in pure laning as a champ like victor you know still has the ability to to take skirmishes still has some gank set up still has some self peel so i think Syndra, you know for in many ways is the premier answer to oriana and since oriana is the strongest champ at the moment i think that alone gives Syndra a lot of power um overall i still think Syndra is pretty good like I, i've been having a lot of success with her i think she scales well and does really well against other mages on the list so she, she's probably the premier anti-mage and definitely a good counter you can blind her but i would recommend blinding something else. Azir has also dropped a little bit for me and, and mainly that's because of the meta around him so I think Azir I don't know on one hand like you kind of get buffed by having the game be a little slower and, and less ganks and stuff like that but the thing is Azir actually has really good gank setup and Azir is really good at avoiding ganks too so Azir actually doesn't mind a lot of fast-paced play around mid as long as there's not too much skirmishing um, and I also think a kind of problem for Azir right now is that he struggles laning against both Syndra and Orianna especially if you're not receiving gank assist so Azir is still I think quite overpowered but I don't think he's an S tier anymore again last patch I probably would have put like Lissandra and Azir in S tier but I think because of that I've moved him down a little bit next over here so Talia, Silas, Akali and Yon I think all these champions are really strong as long as you use them as counter picks so I think these are meta counter picks in my mind and I'll, I'll talk about what they're good against so Talia, she can be scary to blind mainly because of matchup it's not too bad to blind Talia against engage comps because obviously she has her E and you can go stuff like phase rush ghost or spellboat like you have lots of ways of dealing with it but again uh, there's a lot of difficult matchups for Talia again like the Syndra Ori the Vex can also be quite hard although you do well into Vex and team fights um, Azir can be a problem so there's a lot of like meta matchups that are sort of bad for Talia but compositionally I think Talia is still a pretty good blind Counter picking with Talia though, I mean very very good against comps that are short range, very good against melee comps or dash comps, anything that can be punished for this, or if you have lots of CC on your team already, Talia is really really good with the follow up. Um, Silas, so Silas is pretty OP whenever you're not getting crushed in lane, so I think Silas is a great first strike and conqueror user, so you can use either. Um, there's a lot of really good ults in the meta, which is great, you just want to make sure that you don't have too difficult a matchup. The nice thing about both, you know, Silas, well I guess all three, Silas, Akali and Yon, is that D shield just got buffed, which is nice, so you get a little bit more sustain in those difficult lanes. I still think they're better as counter picks though, so Silas, again, it's just like easy lanes or comps where you have really good ults, especially if you can get like Alistair ult or if I don't, those will always feel really good. Akali is a good counter to mainly melee champs or champs that just are going to let you get through lane for free. If you're against a weak laning range champ, you can kind of get through it for free as well. Or a champ that's very skill shot reliant. Like a lot of the time you'll see something like D shield fleet Akali versus something like Syndra. And then you can kind of just play with the move speed and play with boots rush to kind of like neutralize all that. Um, now there are some matchups that I think can be quite hard for Akali and, and something I would recommend is if you are playing Akali, I would ban Lissandra. I really don't think it's worth it. And if you leave Lissandra up, I would actually say that Akali drops in priority a lot, like on this tier list, because Lissandra is incredible against this champ. Even if you can get ahead in lane, which is not easy, it's just so easy to get shut down in fights. And I don't really like being forced to go like, you know, Merc Treads, Tenacity, Unflinching. Like you can do that for sure, but it's like, uh, I don't know, you'd still rather be a different champ. So be very careful of leaving Lissandra up and I think just use her as a counter. Yon is pretty much in the same boat where he's, again, if you get away with the laning phase, he's an incredible champ, but you're kind of reliant on having an AP jungler because, you know, obviously you're an AD mid. I guess you can kind of get away with it, but 
I don't know. It's better not to have double AD mid jungle if you can. Um, if your jungler can pressure mid and alleviate a lot of your pressure, that's really good because Yon does struggle 1v1 against a lot of these champs. Like Yon 1v1 versus Tully is not good, Azir, Vex, Ori. But if you can get gank set up, you can deal with some of these champs. So again, be quite careful with how you're picking him. Um, but he does have a lot of potential if you can get away with that laning phase. Moving on to the B tier, so there's a few champs I want to talk about. The first one being LeBlanc. So I think LeBlanc is actually pretty good right now, especially as a counter pick. But she's pretty bad as a blind because there are a lot of champs in the meta that can be very difficult for her in 1v1. So if you're picking LeBlanc, you know, there's stuff that like uh, Vex can be hard. Syndra without receiving ganks can be hard. Um, Lissandra, even though the lane is okay, is very difficult in the team fights. Orianna is quite a difficult lane. But LeBlanc can be pretty useful against some of these other champs. Like LeBlanc versus Talia is pretty good. LeBlanc versus Silas, Akali, Yon is all pretty solid. So she has a lot of good matchups. She also has a lot of bad matchups. Overall, I wouldn't blind pick her. But I still think that, you know, like the rest of B tier, she is a fairly strong champion and should definitely be thought about. Fizz, I've moved down a bit. So Fizz is always one of those champs that I think is pretty good in solo queue, but I really feel like at the moment there are a few matchups in the meta that are making it pretty tough for him. So, um, you know, obviously Lissandra being the main one. Now, if Lissandra is banned, that makes your life a whole lot easier, but it's just the bar of execution for Lissandra to neutralize you or to make your game difficult is so low compared to how well you have to play. You know, like whenever I play Lissandra versus Fizz, I just feel like the game is so easy. Even if I play horrifically, I'm still going to outperform the Fizz, which is pretty sad. Um, but that's, I mean, the nature of counterpicks. So Fizz, I would probably not blind pick him anymore unless you're banning Lissandra and then maybe you can get away with some stuff. I mean, there's still some annoying matchups to deal with, you know, like champs with mobility like Azir can be annoying. Um, but, I, I, you know, Fizz is pretty good against a champ like Syndra, like a mobile and with a lot of skill shots. So again, has some decent matchups in the meta, but probably not as strong and not as just pickable as he was before. Um, next couple of ones I want to talk about is Ziggs and Victor. So Ziggs, I haven't actually played Ziggs on the patch, but I watched quite a few Ziggs VODs yesterday. Um, and I think the Ziggs change is pretty good. Like the, the Q, at least before the way that Ziggs was laying is you pretty much had to just hit your Q by, you know, getting the AOE off creeps and that's how you poke people down. But if you were versus someone that was playing well and they just kind of like stood apart from the creeps and then when your Q was on cooldown, you know, it looks to got really aggressive on you. It was pretty hard to lane. Um, but I think the, the kind of radius change on the Q makes it a lot easier to hit and it makes you a lot stronger and lame that's really good i mean he is quite a good answer to some of the other mages so overall that's solid um but i think there were some nerfs in this patch to ziggs right like i think the the plating nerf obviously is a little bit to ziggs i guess you might consider him slightly buffed you know by not getting ganked as much so i mean that's kind of nice but yeah, I don't know. I still think Ziggs is overall probably better off this patch, but he's not as good as he could have been. The thing that I still don't really like too much about Ziggs is that he's not that great at early skirmishing and, you know, doesn't have any gang set up or anything. So I still think he's on the weaker side and he, he's a lot like Victor where he has this incredible 1v1, um, but he he lacks in a lot of areas too. And I feel like those areas that you, you gain in aren't really worth the ones you give up. So like for both Ziggs and Victor, these champs that are very good in laning phase, very good scaling, you know, re really like late game monsters, you... You're giving up the ability to skirmish, to snowball, like, by ganks, to um, really, like, actually kill your opponent in the 1v1, whereas it feels like a champ like Ori or like Syndra, sure, they might not scale as hard, they might not be quite as good in the 1v1, but they're almost as good, and they almost scale as well, but they have a lot more options on top of that. So I think, yeah, they're, they're still strong champs for sure, but I prefer different things. Um, another champ I want to talk about in this list is Ari. So Ari, you might be kind of surprised, is, is pretty low down here. And the thing is, Ari didn't really get any weaker. But what you would remember is that I'm I'm kind of rating these champions relative to each other in, in terms of the role they play for solo queue. So Ari's main role is as a blind pick neutralizer or to enable like mid jungle 2v2 right and the thing is lissandra does all this but a lot better at the moment so like if you're looking to play engage if you're looking to play counter engage if you just want the blind pick neutralizer that can't be ganked lissandra is better at all of these things and so i don't really feel like ari has much value in the current meta because like lissandra just does it all better um before sometimes there was an argument that a champ like ari could be better with champs like um maybe like graves or something right because the lissandra could get quite aggressive but graves for most part would just be playing for tempo rather than actually playing for ganks um but i think in that case like oriana is kind of better right like oriana can shield for the graves um still get a lot of push get a lot of priors so i don't know is ari bad no by no means like she's still in b tier i still think she's a pretty strong champ overall but for me lissandra has kind of replaced ari in my champion pool at the moment there's still a couple games here and there i play ari because lissandra gets banned a lot uh but overall i think lissandra is just 
filling Ari's role better, at least in my mind. Next, I will come down to the C tier. So C tier, again, like these champions are not necessarily weak. They're just very situational. So I'll give you some examples. Like Galio can actually be a really, really good pick when you've got tons of engage on your team. Like if you're playing Galio and you're versus like an enemy melee mid that cannot punish you, right? Like you're versing something like an Akali. Um, and you've got like a Camille, a Jarvan, a Rakan. Like this would make Galio into an S tier pick pretty much immediately, right? But the problem is this is like a, that's like a lot of things to rely on. Like Galio is not particularly blindable in terms of matchup. There are a lot of difficult range champs that can pressure him really hard. Um, and he's also not really a blind pick compositionally, right? Like if they pick a lot of mobility or if they pick kind of anti-dive champs like Zaya or your team just like doesn't pick the right champs around you, then Galio kind of falls off quite a bit. So again like relative to a champ like Lissandra it feels like Galio is just quite specific but I honestly think like in a good Galio game he, he could potentially be more valuable than Lissandra. It's just like, how often are you going to get that Galio game? I feel like not very often. Like, I've been looking to pick Galio on my main, right, for the road to rank one. Um, but I haven't really found a game yet where I've been like, okay, Galio is really just a better pick than something else. Um, so some other examples of, of this sort of thing would be like Yasuo. Like, Yasuo can be really, really valuable if you've got like Yasuo Diana on your team or you've got some incredible knockup comp, right? You've got like um, Yasuo Rel Samira Malphite or something. Like, that could be really crazy. But it's like, how often do these comps kind of come together uh, i feel like not that often in solo queue maybe if you're like doing mid jungle or something you could get them more often and set those sort of things up but yeah overall just doesn't happen too often uh and nivia could be another one so like Anivia is very very good against short range comps she's really really good against melee champs in general uh but she really really struggles to lane against a lot of mages right like if you're playing Anivia at the moment you're playing against ori syndra azir you're gonna have a pretty tough time um you can against some of the shorter range mages do well like Anivia is quite good versus cassio um Anivia can be quite good against a champ like ari as long as you're not getting ganked so there are definitely like games where i think Anivia is good but i'm just like thinking you know how often really are you going to pick this champ and how worth is it investing into at the moment i don't know for, for me like anivia has never really been in my pool so it's not a champ that i'm just like gonna pick unless it's really good i guess and you know looking at the rest of these of uh, the current meta i don't think it's gonna be that good and another thing you have to remember is like anivia is not good at so much against the champs that people should be picking but if you're playing in an elo where people aren't playing the meta champs then you might find anivia is more valuable and that's kind of the same thing with these d tier champs so i get um two in a second is like if people are blind picking properly like it's not good but if people are picking weird stuff and you're in low elo then honestly it could have quite a bit of value so finally i'll come down to the d tier so i think these are the champs that again overall they're, they're probably a bit on the weaker side and maybe should receive some buffs and that being said, like, they still have some situations. Like, okay, the thing with Corky, right? I actually think Corky is reasonably strong as a champ, and I think I've said this before, but it's like, how often can you really pick Corky? So, like, the matchups for Corky that are really good are ones that are free or that you kind of like do really well into in the mid game so like free matchups would be stuff like malzahar or vega but the thing is like these are already not blind pick champs right so if you're using corky as a counter pick because he's not a blind and you counter champs that are in turn not blindable the only time you're picking this is when people are kind of like trolling and, and blinding champs that shouldn't be blinded right which is not going to be very often the only matchup i can really see corky being valuable in at the moment there's probably yeah there's maybe a couple so i think corky versus ear is kind of good because corky can get away from the um from the ganks it up at six azir isn't super pressuring pre-6 which is corky's biggest weakness and corky does do well into azir in the mid game like for the range so you know if i'm looking at a champ like corky the only time i'm basically going to play this in the meta is in one matchup which makes he, me put him quite low but is he actually super weak as a champ like no i don't really think so but again it's like relative like am i when am i going to pick corky over any of these other champs very very rarely if there were maybe another champ you could think about at first and this is kind of a weird one Corky is actually pretty good versus akali and the reason is that you can rush hex drinkers so if you end up being like Corky versus like a double ap mid jungle and they have an akali you can actually like neutralize the lane really well you have enough wave clear to stop her from roaming um and you actually outscale her really hard and if you can force her into some really awkward build like void staff second because you have a hex drinker that can be quite good but again like if we're really worried about you know the akali blind a another champ that shouldn't be blind there's better options right stuff like the Lissandra or, or even the Galio or maybe an Anivia or something right so it's just very rare that I'm going to look for a champ like this and it's basically the same with any of these champs like Rise you're really looking for like I don't know what would you need like a ganking jungler like Lee Sin you would want your bot lane probably to be something pushing like Caitlyn Lux um and then you just like dive bot on repeat like that could be something but how often is that going to happen in solo queue I think very rarely and you kind of need them to have a short range comp as well 
Um, and yeah, pretty, mu pretty much same deal with these. Like Kassadin, obviously a good AP counter, but takes a while to scale in a meta that is still reasonably fast paced. Um, and Velkoz is honestly like a decent anti-mage, but he loses a lot of other things for it. And I think there are better anti-mages for sure. So I think that's going to be it in terms of talking about individual champs. As I said before, I didn't want to talk about every champ on the list. Um, and again, the thing to remember is these champs are relative to kind of other champs that fulfill their role. So like, you know, if we're talking about like anti-mage champs like Velkoz, is Velkoz really the worst mid laner in the game? Like probably not, but there are much better and much stronger anti-mages to um, consider. One last thing I want to talk about before I go is just what are the blind picks at the moment and kind of like when you should pick them and what matchups to be scared of. So I would say the best meta blinds at the moment are uh, probably Ori, Lissandra, and maybe Azir. Obviously, like, if you can't play Azir, like, you don't blind him, right? But I would say these are the best. And so the things to kind of consider, there are, like, pros and cons to each of them. So Oriana gets most of the pros in that she is, you know, probably, like, solid all-round scaling, does well in pretty much every lane, you know, strong laning phase, good early skirmishing. I suppose the weakness of Ori Blind is, again, getting countered by a ton of engage or a ton of pick potential or a ton of threat on mid, in which case, Lissandra is probably a better blind. Um, so Lissandra is also a very good blind, right? You can go for that. But the downside of this is you are giving up a little bit in the laning phase. Like, there are champions like Ori and and Syndra and Azir that, that will pressure the landing phase or there are some champs that are a bit greedier that you probably can't punish and can scale for free like if you verse something like I don't know a a Vladimir or like a Victor or something like you're really relying on ganks it up so for me uh, playing in high though I'm mostly pretty confident that as long as I have a ganking jungler or something on my team that they are going to pressure mid now if you're an elo where your junglers don't play around mid you might find Lissandra to be a bit less valuable at the same time if you're playing in that elo you might find that you don't need help in lane as Lissandra because the players are against just aren't good at laning so Orientless, in my mind, the two best blinds. Azir is still a very good blind overall. Like, he does do well in most lanes. He's, um, you know, yeah, good good lane pressure. Not that great at skirmishing, but has a lot of mobility and has a lot of um, lot of scaling as well. I would probably look towards Azir blind if Oriana were banned. And, like, I, I don't know, I had a jungler that wasn't going to gank. So, like, I'm kind of thinking, okay, pretty much if Ori's open, I just pick it. Um, otherwise, maybe choosing between, like, Lissandra and Azir. Other good blinds that you can think about, I think Jace is probably the best AD mid blind. Um, Vex is like okay as long as you're like as long as Ori's banned and you're not too scared of Syndra. Um, you can still look to blind champs like Ari or Lux, and they're still good neutralizers. But again, I think you're probably looking towards other ones still. Um, again, I have a blind pick tier list, so if you want to like go back to that and kind of see my thoughts on every champion, I think I talked about it in that. I might link it in the description below. But yeah, I think that's going to be it for this one. Let me know what you guys think. Obviously, we are only a couple days into the patch, so this is somewhat based on just initial thoughts. That being said, I don't think the meta, at least yet, is too different from the previous patch, so I, I th still think it's pretty well informed. But of course, yeah, let, let me know what you guys think. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.